Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. With me today is Eileen Silverberg. She is the author of Warrior of Light, and we're going to discuss caregiver self-care and why it's important and why it's more than bubble baths and candlelight. So thanks for joining me, Eileen. Thank you, Jennifer. It's a pleasure to be with you and with your audience. Thank you so much. Welcome. So first, tell me about you and your mom, because you're still taking care of your mom. Yes, I am. Uh, my mom is still with us. And uh, of course, through the process, through the, a huge process, now she's in a uh, nursing facility. Uh, she's very well advanced, cannot walk and and it was a decision, a very difficult decision, but a decision that was uh, the best for her. And eventually, we caregivers understand that if that's the case, and that's what, what is happening in your dynamic, is probably the best thing for the caregiver as well. So then you can really give that attention and that love that they need at that stage in life versus just caring for the person and being seen as the person who is um, mortifying <laughs> the, 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 right yes and and it's true and it happens and they don't know any better so it's um uh, that's that's the case but yes my mother um I'm, I'm from my mother is from puerto rico so and i live in miami and i had to move my mom from puerto rico um eventually when she actually allowed it to happen of course it that was that was also a process that over five years before she figured out that she could not be alone anymore and i think at that moment she was just probably um in the stages of a lot of depression and one day she just kind of said it without really realizing what she was saying to be completely honest because this is what happens we caregivers think that our parents or our loved ones know exactly what they need because they're telling you, but they don't know. So we get confused with that. And I went ahead and I moved it, which was very necessary because she needed that person taking care of her and she was not being taken care of the way she needed to be. And I moved there to Puerto Rico, uh, to Miami, Florida. So of course with that came readjusting to a new dynamic in the family, um, a house that was not her home, although she always was on vacation here and she loved it, but all those things. So it's, it's my journey, a warrior of light is my journey of realizing um, or, or listening to the shocking test, the shocking diagnose of dementia. Although we know it's that shocking experience and how you think or your actually your brain says to you, or you can you can make it happen, and realizing that it takes way more than that that you believe it, it goes on. And dementia, we all know, is a progressive disease, so it's not going to ever get better. And we, in the back of our head, even though we know and we're smart people and we understand, we are not yet fully educated on how progressive this is. It will not get better. It doesn't matter what you do. You can manage it, especially if you manage yourself. You can manage the patient. But other than, and I hate to call it the patient, but your loved ones, because they're not patients. They're just your loved ones. That's why it's so difficult. Maybe a patient, you have a, a more... Uh, a, a different way of looking at things. But when it's your person, when it's your loved one, then you, you don't know the right things to do. You, 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 you confront yourself with so many feelings. And it talks about my journey and many people believe, oh, it's the book about dementia, which, or Alzheimer's or Lewy body dementia or what have you. And the book talks about my journey, but the book is about how to take care of yourself so you can be better fit to care for that person you love so much going through dementia. That was my challenge. 
this book nowadays living the moments that we're living i have people calling me and say thank you for your book because i thought i was going to listen to your story and then i realized this book is helping me getting through these moments and that's what it's called a guide of inner wisdom for challenging times and that's what it's all about yes this is definitely challenging times for Alzheimer's caregivers. I'm really grateful both of my parents are gone because I don't think my dad would handle doing virtual rotary meetings and not being able to go to lunch with his buddies and being stuck at home with my mom. No, he would have been like, I'm out, I'm done. And then my mom was in a care home and she fell and broke her leg and oh. went, this was right, this March 8th was the day she broke her leg. She went back to the care home on March 12th. I saw her the 12th, the 14th, and the 16th. And on the 16th, they're like, that's it. We're closing the visitors. We don't know what this virus thing is going to be doing. So yeah, <laughs> go away. Don't come back. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And you know, it, then finally in California, it started raining and it was easy to stay home. My husband was the one going to the grocery store. And I just felt like, okay, well, I will stay home. But, you know, after a week, I was like, uh, this isn't good. And after about 10 days, I was like, I've been home. I haven't seen people. And I really feel like I need to see my mom. And I had hospice for her, which at the time I was, I got the hospice because I'd been trying to set up palliative care and that was not working. And I don't know if it's the company the company that does the palliative care took care of my dad when he was on hospice and they were great. They have not been great this year. So I'm not sure if it's just complete overwhelm with this virus. I don't know what the problem is. Mm -hmm. So there's another company that worked with the care home and they were recommended by a client of my husband's whose mother-in-law was all is also there. So I'm like, at this point, I just need help. Extra, everybody needs extra help with mom. Mom needs extra attention. So I got hospice. I seriously did not think that two weeks later she'd be gone. Mm. Fortunately, they did let us come see her before she passed away the day before. So, mm. you know, I don't know because I haven't checked. They did let us back in in May to get the stuff out of her room. So it'd been over a month. And then I don't know if they're letting people in right now or not. I keep thinking about emailing the executive director and asking, but it's like, uh, I don't really have time yeah. to go and visit with my dog like I've done in the past. So I haven't right. asked yet. My, um, I, here in Florida, they're not allowing it. And in the facility that my mom is, I am grateful that they're actually taking the measures that they're taking. Although it's been very difficult because no one has been positive. I mean, they're doing an amazing, amazing job. And for that, I just have to say, thank God. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tough. Even yesterday, I wrote a, a post and people were concerned. Are you okay, Eileen? And I said, I am fine. I talk about, you know, it's been more four, four plus day, four months plus, And I haven't had a contact with my mom. In, in person that I mean I see her every day we talk every day over the phone um, I try to make it as, as as amazing as possible but I know I have not sat with my mom and and she's only you know she's here she's here yeah. this is why I moved to my mom here and it is it's a, it's a challenging it's very challenging but we we just need to know that things happen and we have to just use our our freedom our inner wisdom to say okay how does this feel and let's just try to make it better because other than that if we concentrate on that negative side it can really really do a number on our on our mental health and our well-being altogether so um you know this is why i say there's some decisions we make and it's so difficult. And as, as caregivers, we're constantly second guessing what we do. And our self-talk comes to just chatter out there. And uh, there's a, a chapter in the book I call the Tiki Tiki, I call it, which is that inner voice that doesn't help you. That is just so negative. And the more you indulge, the worse it gets. 
So we need to learn to be a little bit more responsible on how to stop it. It's like I always say, think you're having, you're riding a horse and how do you ride that horse? Even make the movement, go, whoa, take it back. Because, you know, the action of the movement plus saying to yourself, well, there's nothing you can do. And truly think of your intention behind your intentions were, of course, loving your your parents loving that person that is not well and maybe understanding that in, in in my mom's situation she needed to have higher help than the one that i could provide it took a long time to realize okay i need doctors constantly there i need somebody who can give her the medicine. Uh, my mom was very aggressive as well. She had Lewy body dementia combined with prefrontal dementia and her hallucinations were huge. And mm. being able to get that medication to, to connect, they were not helping me here because they, they cannot guarantee, doctors cannot guarantee that we are going to do the right um, the right care, not because we're not capable, but monitoring the medications is important. And as a daughter, of course, if I see that after three days it's not working, I don't want to wait a month. Why would am I waiting a month, right? And and of course they don't. They're not going to change the prescription in three days because you assume when your mom is not doing better. So once it gets to that point, you realize. It takes a moment there, maybe a few, few weeks, even a month to say, oh, I get it. I get why she has to be here and how they're monitoring her well. Um, so I always, always encourage each one of the people that follow me, that, that coach with me, just take a moment, breathe, and let's make a list. You know, does she really need that? higher assistant maybe not and if that's the case then that's wonderful and if you can't afford taking care of your mom at home of course they want to be home of course now do they consider your home a home which is another thing see the, so and and tell me tell me something jennifer i think that you can you you probably relate if you don't have a if you're not if you're not going through what we have gone through and what we're going through people don't get it mm -mm. It's, I, it's that thing where people say but oh i, I don't think it's that bad I'm like mm, okay you know they don't they don't understand what is it that we go through and they don't understand also they don't understand the the the, the disease Right. They don't understand the disease has stages. They don't understand that when they're with somebody else, they're truly trying to keep themselves together. And it's somebody new. So it sparks another side of their brain. So of course, they're going to be, for the most part, very lovely. But when they're with us, they are wanting to be cared for. So it's, a different, it's like a little kid. You go to the playground to pick him up after school, Kid is playing. The moment he sees you, then he cries. You're like, what happened? I got a woo-woo. This, you know, look, look, I got a boo-boo at two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, why are you crying right now? Because you're finally here. <laughs> so that's exactly what happens. And um, yeah, and, and, and when you see it that way and you give it, not, not that you're laughing at the situation, but when you see their little children, they're going in a different stage you can relax and say, okay, how are we gonna handle that situation? I just read about an article, why does my loved one act better for other people than they do for me? Because that is a seriously maddening situation. Yes. <laughs> and then it also causes people to say, you know, oh, I, I don't think your mom's that bad. Are you sure she has Alzheimer's? So they're second guessing what we already know because they're not seeing it. And a lot of it is because we're the impediment to our loved ones, what they want to do. So we're the one, we're the enemy. We're the one saying no, or no, you have to take a shower today, or you need to eat this, or you need to go to the doctor. We're not the fun person. It's like, we're not the fun parents. So. Right. Uh, and, and in their brain, that's part of how they react. Yes. 
completely. I mean, there are the people that are not allowing me to do the fun things I want to do. And part of my self-care plan is learning how to not be that person. So how so, do you suggest people do that? Okay, so yes, I'm sorry, that, go ahead. That's okay, I know it's hard. <laughs> I, I have found between my own experiences and all the people I've talked to, is most people, they get that emergency call or all of a sudden now dad can't be by himself or, you know, we, we all embark on the caregiving journey with the best of intentions yes. and I think the least amount of information because <laughs> we always assume it's our, it's my mother, it's my dad, it's my spouse. We can, you know, it's my responsibility. We can handle this. And the next thing you know, you're up to your neck in holy Toledo Mm -hmm. what am I doing? <laughs> and mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of drowning. And so one of my goals is to help people realize like in the very, if they're diagnosed or their loved one is diagnosed and they're in the earlier stages is that you need to know what the later stages are like. So you can kind of work your way backwards and say, okay, well, I'm gonna, I, I think I could take care of my mom or my spouse until this part. And maybe you'll be able to go longer. A lot of people think, They'll never be able to do it. And they, you know, there's things I know I did with my mom that was like, seriously, why am I, I'm actually doing this? Yes. And it's just, you know, I think, like I said, I think people, they embark on caregiving with the best intentions for their loved one yes. and like, and they end up drowning because we don't, we don't make a plan for our own needs and care. Cause I don't think we realize how much we're going to need to do that. And that's the, that's the tricky part. And I don't think that, anything there explains to us many of the books that we read are beautiful keep the memories going which is important super important um you know do that with love of course you know that's important too but they don't go into this is what's going to happen and you better have a plan for that situation so my book talks a lot about that and what i go into i call it a a plan and a preparation. So it's like what you are seeing right now, what you can expect, you may, may not, but you have to know what you can expect. And if that happens, how would you want to pursue? And then write it down. I always say, have it written down somewhere. So when you're in chaos, that's not the time where you're right brain is going to give you the most creative answers and your left brain is just going to stop and be angry. So, you know, you have to do it ahead of time. So I tell everyone, you suspect your parents are having that kind of difficulty, start sitting down and make a plan. It's a, pl a preparation plan um, because they may tell you the, they're at the beginning stages. When they can figure out that they're in the beginning stages, they're usually in the mid stages. That's true. That, that's it, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you in that so much. Yeah. I read your post and I'm like, yes, that's true. How come nobody tells you? Even the doctor is like, well, she has beginnings of dementia. I'm like, well, okay. That's I forget my keys too. No, this goes, this is beyond that. I mean, if somebody has to sit you down, I understand probably they don't want to do it in front of their parents um, because you don't want those people to be afraid of what's coming. There's no reason for them to be aware of that, but we do need to be prepared. So I always say, expect the challenge and prepare for the challenge what are the challenges they may not be able to walk like my mother so if they don't walk do you really want to keep it at home how are you going to change them how are you going to shower them i mean all those things need to be thought out and nobody wants to think of those things but because you start with so much intention but part of your intention is that with you your parents is going to be great and i think that that is something that we need to let go and because we take it personally taking the me out of the equation is so important um as as we see our parents for instance with my mother right now 
are you jealous of the private that you have who's there? And I've been very blessed that they have allowed the private to stay because I told them, I said, my mom, she, I mean, you don't understand this, this change for her. The private doesn't have a life. She, will, she gets tested as anyone there in the facility. So she's always with my mom and she loves her. And people ask me, are you jealous of the lady? And I said, no, this is really important. You understand that there's going to be a moment in time where your mom is going to create a connection because they feel safe and you want them to have that connection. You want your parents to feel safe and hopefully it's not with you only because that means if it's only with you, you cannot do anything. That's where care, self-care comes. Then you can take some time to be able to say, what do I enjoy doing that I haven't been able to do and that I needed to make me feel happier? And just make a list of five things. You may, not, you may never be able to get the five things done, but if you get to do two, those are the mini moments that we have to sit down and say, ah. And I'm not talking about great things, like for instance, going dancing for me, you know, to go into my dance class, but even a cup of coffee in the morning without stressing about the breakfast or the dressing or whatever it is that was a moment that, that was not for me, but for my loved ones. I think the moment you decide, okay, cup of coffee is really important that I have it and I can enjoy that cup of coffee, maybe because that's your prayer time, or maybe because that's the time that you actually look at your flowers outside and you're so happy to see them blooming or not. So then you wake up a little early. So then, then you, you play with it. You say, okay, that moment, nobody can take it away. I choose to have that moment as one of those mini moments of the right here right now i'm enjoying myself another one is showering if taking a shower becomes challenging when you have someone <laughs> that I you're a, caring because i have a friend whose dad doesn't like her to leave the room exactly so showering if he he while well, he's back the He's in an adult day program and then they were closed for a while because of the pandemic. And then I guess they reopened on a limited basis and he goes back. And that's her, a lot of her time for her. But when it was the two of them in their home together, oh my goodness, my poor friend was losing her mind. And he has Lewy body dementia. So when we have a full moon, he gets even weirder. <laughs> that's what happened to my mom. And, and, and also they get difficulties walking you know they have this like they think they're gonna fall so she will fall because her <laughs> connection of the brain and the body is not the same as it used to be um, and it took a long time to be able to prove that that was happening because when you go to the doctor in the whatever even if the doctor is great and it takes 45 minutes to have a conversation with you most likely when your mom is walking in front of the doctor it's not happening. It's happening when you're going to Marshalls with your mom, you know, and then she's tripping every time she takes a step because she's nervous, because she's self-conscious, because I'm paying attention to something else instead of her. And then all of a sudden she needs to go to the bathroom or she cannot walk the way she needs to walk. So all those things need to be addressed ahead of time and decide that Imagine an, a car that has plenty of gas and you can go and you say, oh, I can drive for two and a half hours without caring. Now, when it starts getting too empty, you start realizing, okay, I can only go another extra mile. And then there's not a gas station anywhere close. Then you panic. And then of course the car stops. Yeah. So I think that caregivers should be looking at themselves as a car that has that little arrow and have to understand that there's no journey you can make without filling up your tank first. Because when it's completely full, you're not going to worry. You may have to stop at one particular point to refill, but you will not worry. You're just going. You're like, okay, I'm refreshed. I can go. But when that, empty, when, when that arrow is close to empty, 
you worry, and if it's empty, you cannot go. So picking, I, I, I try to tell people, okay, I want you to think of five things. Maybe two that involve money. Um, you know, if you have a hobby that, that you actually need to spend money, like a dance class, going to the gym, all those things that you're saying, but every time I pay my membership and I cannot get there, it upsets me. Now you're upset because of the money you're putting down that you're not using and you're not really going to the gym and that was your outlet. Um, so you need to think, is that that important? If it is, then you're going to take something that includes a financial um, payment, you know, something that involves money and you're going to put it in your list and you're going to say, this is really important to me because figure out why is that important to you. I don't, I think that we think of self-care always. So I need, I need to self-care because, uh, because everybody else is doing it or because I want to do my hair. No, why, why going to the gym makes you better? That's the question. So then answer that. Then I think that you need to involve something like the mini moments. Is it a cup of coffee? Is it being able to take a shower? And when you're in the shower, does that make you feel good? Like you feel like at least I have 10 minutes for myself. Then that should always be important and you put it there. And then you put another thing that involves socialization because what happens is we're so exhausted that we really want to get together with friends and we probably resent you know, having those friends reach out to us. But the truth is, that when it's time to get together with them, we don't want to because we're exhausted, because we run out of topics of talk about, what are you gonna talk about, about your mom and how she's driving you insane, right? So you decide, no, I'm not gonna meet with that person. So I think it's very, very important that you define if having people around you is important and why. So the definition is, if I had somebody walking to my house who told me yesterday, I'm going to come visit and visit you, and that person would not show up, what would you think immediately? Would you think, oh, thank God, because I didn't want to see her? Not because I don't love her, because I don't want to see anybody. I don't even want to put makeup on or dress up. Two, I can't believe she doesn't care for me. Or three, I'm so worried about her. Something must have happened. So which one is it? If it's the, oh, I'm so glad she didn't come. Maybe that's, having a social life is not that important in your list. But if it's, I'm worried about her and wow, she doesn't care enough, then having that connection with others, which I think is super important, should be part. So now self-care is not about putting a mask on or having your nails done or having a glass of champagne or, or wine with friends. And then how am I going to have a glass of wine? And then I'm going to be kind of tipsy when I get home. And then that's not going to work out. No, it's about what are my needs and how am I going to do, how am I going to fulfill those needs in a way that works for me and for my family circle? So when you answer, this is good because of that, then you plug it in. And what you do is at least out of seven days a week, five days a week, you take one or you take the other one. Maybe if you go to the gym or dancing or, or tennis class or whatever it is that you, you know, or riding your bicycle, whatever it is, maybe that day you don't have your cup of coffee, but maybe you do have two. Now, once you establish that, I moved everybody to be present. And that's so important because what happens is, okay, I did all that, but I'm thinking about my mom. I'm so worried. Mm -hmm. mm. So I was, I was like that. I go to the gym and I, I was not an exercise person until like about 10 and a half years ago. Then I went on a very large weight loss journey. And through the journey of losing the weight, I discovered a huge benefit of exercise was not feeling homicidal to my husband or my daughter or the weirdo on the street. And now it's like, if I 
if I don't do some physical exercise six days a week and I have three golden retrievers, so that's pretty easy to ma manage. Mm -hmm. I get crabby and it, and it just, and like on edge and just like physically not fun to be around even for myself. <laughs> and I learned really quickly that if I went and visited my mom and I was feeling tense or stressed, I didn't even have to say anything. If I was just a little wound up, man, she'd pick up on it and instantly we would go right down the wrong path. So sometimes I had to like psych myself up with, a, you know, if I was feeling tired or stressed and I couldn't reschedule when I would go, then I would just be like, oh, this is going to be the worst visit. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I would just like, I would just like envision the worst and then it, it was never the worst. So that, that always worked, which is a really strange way to, to get there. But yeah, going to the gym, exercising, walking the dogs, obviously none of us are going to the gym right now. So we take long walks with the dogs three days a week. And I ride my, well, my husband and I ride our bikes three days a week. And then, so I guess the dogs we walk for, so you know the the beautiful thing that you say and that's what you find in the book when i call it a guide of inner wisdom we all know what we need your body tells you you just said it you actually did it when i'm tense when you're tense the body is saying please jennifer i'm telling you there's something i need and it's not jennifer you who can come up with answers is that inner child that inner person that feels neglected so you need to say wait hold on this is this is the universe knocking at my door and saying i'm going to give you something that you should pay attention to when your shoulders are tense it's because you need to do something about it instead of waiting until you're collapsed for me, I had, it, it was eating. I mean, I, I was so tense, my stomach will close and I could not literally eat because for me, eating has to be a pleasant experience. We need to sit down and we need to chat and this is great. But if, if my mom is stressed and then my mom is looking at me, are you going to eat? And I'm, no mom. And you know what? They, they catch up because as I do a lot of spiritual to coaching and I, I like to add mind, body and, and, and soul to everything, to every experience. When they get to this stage where they're losing their now, the, this thing that calls me to be, to get dressed up because, oh, we have a podcast or, um, Oh, I don't know. I feel strange because she never called me. Now we're, we're assuming something. So once that goes away, that ego starts to diminish, which happens with patients with dementia. Of course, it goes away. Their filter goes away. <laughs> they become very spiritual in a sense that they can sense. They're more, they can be more self-aware of things that you believe they're not. They can hear better. They're probably very, very, they cannot hear. They're, 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 um, their hearing is not perfect. But if you're whispering, oh my God, I don't know what happened. She's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Their, their, their senses are enlightened. That's what I like to call it. So we need to know that too. So we don't whisper in front of our parents. So that's part of self-care. Why am I going to talk to people like, because she's going to catch up on that. And when she does, she's going to question you. She's going to be upset. And then that will create those kind of moments. So it's best to advise people ahead of time. I'm calling you at this time. So when you come visit mom, you will know that this happened, this happened, this happened. I'd rather not talk about it in front of her because I know that's a sensitive issue for her, but I want you to know. So right there, you put it there. Then when you come visit, let's make a pleasant visit for mom and for everybody else. So that's one thing. The other thing that I, I, I as we're picking five things for self-care, once you determine that you need to be present, it's important. And I always say, even if you're in the shower, I want you to be present. So, 
okay, I have these five minutes to take a shower. I'm so thankful because I can feel clean, because it's quiet, because I love how the water goes through my body. I love to smell my soap or my whatever it is that you use. I love to scrub and scrub until I'm so clean. Oh, I'm so thankful for this. Or the water is lukewarm. No, I like it hot more. All those things, this is exactly what you need to center on. Same thing. I'm at the gym. I'm building my muscles. I'm going to lose weight. I look great. I'm getting to my ideal work. This is great. I feel in my hamstrings getting so strong. That way, it's your time. And it's after, if it's an hour that you took for the gym, it's your time. It's not, I wonder how my mom is doing with brother, sister, person who's caring for her or by herself. I, I, and, and that's what is not selfish. Because the moment you get to do that and you feel like, okay, at least I took 10 minutes to shower without interruptions, mm -hmm. then you can say, okay, I'm going to go take care of my mom now with a different, that, now that love that was at the beginning of the equation, we all, we all mean well, that love factor is there again. Every time we fill our cup, there is juice, water, tequila, whatever it is, <laughs> coffee, whatever is in that cup, there is some liquid in there that you can actually give some to the person next to you if there's nothing in that cup you can offer the cup the cup is empty imagine if you say you want some of this sure you give it to them what the heck there's nothing in there <laughs> there's gonna be a fight right That's true so i had an idea while you were talking about the gym my mom loved to watch kids and i think this is like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ease into this one sideways here. I think it would be really helpful if corporations not only had on-site child care, but they had on-site elder care. And it would have been really awesome if my gym had like an area in the child care where my mom could have just gone and sat yes. while I did the class. I didn't actually need that because after my dad passed away, she moved into the memory care. But there was a little short period of time while he was in the hospital that that would have been really, really beneficial. So I'm just throwing out some ideas out there right now because yes. we're in a period where I think a lot of things are going to change, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're not just going to be sitting at home Zooming with everybody for the rest of our lives. <laughs> yes, and you, and you talked about the socialization. My husband and I, you know, at the very beginning... I, we, you know, we have a, we're in a, a cycling club and at the very beginning of the crisis, we were like, mm, we'll just stay home. And like I said, it was raining and you don't road cycle when it's raining unless you would like to end up in the hospital. <laughs> and after a while I put my bike on the trainer cause I'm like, oh, I got to burn off this, this stress. And then it got nicer. And so the two of us started going out, which was great for him cause he hadn't been cycling for a long time. He had to take his bike to the shop and the guy had it for a bit of basically two weeks. And so I had to reconnect with our group. Now we ride socially distant and we don't, you know, when we, when we stop and take a break, everybody's six feet apart, but it was like, man, I really needed to be with somebody other than my husband <laughs> for a yeah. while, <laughs> even yeah. though there's not a lot of social interaction because you're, you're pedaling, but there's, you're just with other humans, even if you're not talking. And that's really, uh, it was interesting how important that was. So I, Social connection is really important. Very, very important. And although I do give the option to everyone, and I said, if it's important to you, answer these questions, you will know. Usually there's never that, oh, I'm so glad the person didn't come unless you're just exhausted. But for the most part, yes, that's what you, you crave to have a moment where you can sit with your friends and just chat about, about whatever it is. And we forget that and we get so stressed and sometimes even subconscious of, I don't have anything else to talk about except my mom. You know what? It's okay. If that's all you have to talk about, at least you can talk about it with somebody else. Well, and you could ask them 
what's going on in their life because exactly people, people always like to talk about themselves. Yes, yes, exactly. And and it's a beautiful interaction. And what you realize is that there's people that really love you, that really, really miss you, that really, really want to be with you. And by uh, taking yourself away from that interaction, you're only hurting yourself. So choose your good friends, you know, um, that's a, it's a good time. This is, has been a good time too, like you said, you know, to, to think of those things. Yes, we can all be together having dinners together like we used to, but what can we do? Can we go bicycle riding? Can we walk? You walk from one distance and the other one, and at least we see each other and we just wave and say, how are you doing? Tell me how's, you know, how's your son that couldn't graduate? So right there, you're connecting. Connection is so important for our well-being, definitely. Well, there's something really simple people can do. Our best friend's daughter-in-law works in a daycare, and she got exposed. They're 10-month-old. She's now almost a year. 10-month-old granddaughter got exposed, and their son got exposed. All three of them ended up with COVID. Mm. And of course... You know, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, uh, first off, I don't know how two sick parents take care of a sick baby, but oof, <laughs> no, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that she knew that I was there. They're in Virginia. We're in California. So I, my friends are here. The sick family members, they're fine now are in Virginia. So about every other morning or about every 36 hours, I would just send her like a funny little gif. I would text it to her. I just wanted her to know that I was thinking about her, but I did not want her to feel pressure. Like, you know, if you just text them, how's everybody doing? You know, it's just, it's like one more little burden or maybe she was, maybe she'd put it out of her mind for five seconds. And now I'm bringing it back up, even though she probably never put it out of her mind. I just, you know, it was like, I would just send just little cute, funny things that didn't require no response just so she knew I was thinking about her. So that's something we could also do for caregivers. Yes. Just a, a good morning. Here's your funny dog photo or whatever, you know, whatever would make them smile. I just went into giphy.com and it's, it was really easy to just text it to, to my friend. And then she knew I cared. Yes. And, and that's so sweet. That's very, very sweet. I had a, a very dear friend, one of my best friends, her husband passed away years few years ago and that's one of the things that how do you treat someone who's grieving and clearly you don't know what to say don't say anything and i will just definitely do the same thing i'll just go grocery store to the grocery store buy whatever i knew she loved some blueberries or this and that put them there text her and say i'm gonna leave some blueberries and this and that because i saw them they look so good you should have some Oh my gosh. Sometimes she will say, no, no, don't go. Come on in. We didn't have to talk about how are you feeling? Are you, did you sleep last night? But it was about the blueberries. And sometimes it was like, oh, that's magnificent. Thank you so much. And, and yes, she always said, thank you for caring. And, and those, are, those are important things. And we need those as caregivers. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we need. That little touch. Well, the other thing that we started doing probably late April, early May was still cool enough. Standing outside wasn't fun. There, our favorite frozen yogurt shop isn't far um, from where we're at. So we could just walk over, they would drive over and we would all stand six or eight feet apart and eat our yogurt. And we would, you know, we would literally socialize for the amount of time it took to eat the yogurt. So 20, 30 minutes top. So that's also, you know, obviously, hopefully someday we don't have to do it socially distant, but that's another <laughs> thing. You know, if there's someplace close, you know, you don't have to have a big, it doesn't have to be a big deal. It could be just something simple that people enjoy. Like you said, the blueberries. I think, I think those are all really, really good ideas. <laughs> yes, they are really good ideas. And the frozen yogurt kind of uh, made me very, very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that's true it sounds so good yes it's like oh gosh yeah that's exactly yeah it's exactly what i can do with my friend who i was talking about she lives in um, an area 
very close to Key Biscayne and there's this bridge that goes over the water. So for a moment there, we will say, okay, we'll meet downstairs, I'll park, I'll meet you, I can see you from the sidewalk and we're walking the bridge together. We were not really hugging, talking. We're not saying, okay, we're gonna go after for breakfast, which we, which we used to do before, but that walking together the bridge became important. It was like, okay, we still can do that and see each other, even though we cannot have that much contact with each other. So that's, that's another thing that we can do. The biking, the walking, it's always, it's always good. Always you have, good. You have suggestions how we can incorporate our loved ones into some of that socialization and exercise. Like I said, oh, it'd be great if my mom could go like, quote, help at the daycare. <laughs> at the gym I, I yes i used to, as i said i love taking dance class and my mom knew that because i've taken it for many many years and i started to take my mom to dance class At the beginning i thought oh my gosh i wanted this to be my time and then i have to worry that my mom is sitting there looking at me she enjoyed it she my mom loved to listen to the music and she would just sit there and just enjoy watching me dance. Now, I made a mistake once, never repeated it again, and I like to talk about my messes so people can learn from those and perhaps you don't have to go through the mess yourself. But I actually, she loved to dance too, and I actually went to say, come on mom, dance. She was so self-conscious that she got mad that I did that. So unless the person really you feel like you want to dance and you offer from a fight you want to get up i can dance with you other than that it's not good to take them to a place and expect that they're going to perform so that's one thing take them another thing is exactly that if you have good friends say to them i would love to join you but i need to take my mom with me is that okay most of the time the person will say of course and then bring your your loved ones along you know be prepared if you need to have a conversation with your friends or whoever you're meeting and say listen i actually have to cut the meat ahead of time or whatever because my mom doesn't know so hopefully you understand they will say of course don't worry about it so that's another thing prepare your friends and take your parents to outings as well. Another thing that I think is great is to, if, if, if your, your loved ones love to people watch, then they go to a park and sit with them, bring whatever, bring a mini picnic, bring some whatever they like to eat and make it a date. Oh my gosh, today we're just gonna have a little bit of you know, juice with these little mini crackers that I bought and we're gonna go to my favorite spot. Let's see if you like it. Sit there and just watch people, watch dogs. If they mm -hmm. like animals, then go to the pet shop. Go and look at the doggies through the window and do that with them. Um, one of my favorite outings and, and it took me a while to go back to the pet shop and and go feeling happy. You know, it took me a, a long time because that was an, an adventure I would do with my mom on Sundays. And I actually made it that kind of thing. I'm like, mom, do you wanna go with me to the pet shop? She's like, but of course. I'm like, oh, thank you, nobody wants to go with me. And you know, I love to walk there and I like to look at the different foods that they have for the dogs. Maybe I change the food. I would like to buy a little bed for the dog. Maybe you can help me pick it. Yes, of course. And we will do that every Sunday. I will just buy a mini bag of food for my doggies and that will give us an outing to do. And she loved it. Um, Another thing we used to do, and I think it's beautiful, is having ice cream. If we we're gonna go have a little ice cream, which you love, I will make it a big deal. It wouldn't be just like, okay, let's just get ice cream. It will be like, guess what? I have a plan. 
I have to do this, but before doing that, we're gonna go have ice cream. Maybe it ends up that after that ice cream, there's no chance that we can get to the other place. So be prepared to not do that, but at least make it really enjoyable, that little moment. So it doesn't have to be huge, but that's, that's something, that, th those are some of the experience that worked for me and they worked really, really well. That's what I do, would do with my mom. We would go to the park, watch kids. We'd go to the swimming pool and watch kids. And in my city, there's a splash zone. So the water comes up out of the ground and it's got these like metal, well, I don't know if they're metal, but they've got built-in squirt guns. And oh my gosh, the kids love it. And when you sit like on the benches around it, it's, you know, it's part of you, at least like your ankles get cooled off. And she loved to watch the kids. I mean, we could we could watch kids for an hour and a half. Oh, I was like, oh, I'm so bored. But I would bring something to read, or it was just a time to just sometimes be with her quietly. Mm -hmm. We didn't. I didn't. It was always after lunch, so I didn't always bring a snack. And the last time we got ice cream was kind of a disaster because this was hmm, this past summer, so about a year ago. No, I think it was actually in November. So she was getting to the stage where she was forgetting how to eat. So she'd have the ice cream in her hand. I think I got a child size scoop in like a big cup mm -hmm. to contain the mess. And she's like waving it around and it's like, it's like yeah. eat it. <laughs> so um, when they started having problems eating, I learned quickly there was because we were moving and I thought, okay, I will um go and grab mom and have lunch out for our visit and then go back but because we'd had such a horrific visit doing that on december 30 30th i was like one day i was like oh forget it i'll just take her with me and i'll have lunch and i'll go and pick her up after she's eaten then i don't have to stress about is she eating is she getting enough nutrients in her body you know and because she would you know, she would make a mess. She'd push the food off the edge of the plate. And then she'd spend an inordinate amount of time straightening up. I called it Alzheimer's OCD. It was like, yes. oh, there's crumbs on the table. And she'd spend like, you know, a minute straightening up. I'm like, just eat. <laughs> Could you just please eat? The only time that backfired was when I went, I was starving. And I went and I'm like, they usually have lunch at like 1130. It's 115 people. I'm starving and they're still <laughs> eating. So I finally said, I'm just going to come back because I'm about ready to die here. <laughs> it's like, you know, and I couldn't take her out with me because she's in the middle of her food. So that was close to the end. But yeah, once they have trouble eating, it gets more challenging. But she, yeah. we went to the library and watched kids. It got trickier in the winter because... You know, like, you know, you're not going to sit outside even, you know, I don't know about Miami, but at least Northern California, it can get kind of cool and damp. So uh, here in the summer, it gets really, really hot. So yeah. and that, and, and when the summer came was very difficult because what do you do outdoors? It was so hot. And of course they tend to, to um, dehydrate so quickly too. So that, that's something, yeah, to, to, to stay focused on that is, uh, okay, make sure that they're not dehydrated because that's not going to be fun. No, and they don't like to drink water either. Mm -hmm. I would hand my mom water, like, oh, I'll never forget the time the, she needed to do an ultrasound and they called them like, well, you need to have her drink, so I think it was at least 16 ounces of water and then, and not pee. And I'm like, please, I okay. can't do that. I can drink the 16 ounces of water, but not the not pee part. I'm like right. make up your mind <laughs> and i explained to them i hated going to the doctor with her because i always had to train them you know my mother has advanced alzheimer's and fortunately i got to the point where she well she thought i was her best friend and one day it clicked in my head that if i referred to her as my mother she didn't realize I was talking about her so i could have talked all kinds of bad things about her oh my, wow um, yeah you might have picked up on that mm -hmm. but um yeah, I could just, I could refer to my mother and she didn't realize I was talking about her. So that was kind of a blessing once I realized that. But, you know, I had to tell them all the time. She's advanced Alzheimer's. I don't have control over how much she drinks or if, she, you know, if she tells me, you know, if she stands up and announces she has to use the bathroom, 
she you has her. Yeah, it's like it's not you know. And the, this one particular day, we actually did manage it because we had to drive 20 miles to the to the doctor. And so I just kept saying, oh, the doctor wanted you to drink some water. Can you drink a little bit of this water? And I just kept handing her the cup. And it was just far enough apart that it didn't piss her off. Because the time mm -hmm. before, I kept reminding her to drink water. I think we were outside in the summer heat. She loved it hot. So that was not, she wouldn't like it Miami hot, but northern yeah. california hot but not humid was fine and so and i knew that she would you know that they dehydrate really easily and i should have just started bringing watermelon and stuff with me because that's so much water and and it's hard to make a mess with watermelon i mean you might get it all over you but it's not like ice yeah. is a big mess so that's a you know a suggestion i've made but yeah i kept reminding her to drink water and she got all she got all upset with me <laughs> yes, that's uh, I, I I had that too for sure, and it's uh, challenging, very 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 challenging. I have to say that this is quite comical. Um, my mom, my mom has still has an amazing personality, and she loved to dance, and she liked life, and she enjoyed singing and music and she smoked her cigarette and she loved to eat and of course if there was a party my mom will have a drink so I will tease her and say mom there's some whatever it is rum tequila no I'm like have that little drink and she will laugh and say everything is in the mind right <laughs> and I thought to myself she is so funny. I mean, to this day, how can she say that? But I will say, yeah, everything is in the mind, mom. And she will. So if, if that's the case, try to use, there's some, their essence sometimes remains, you know, if, if there were funny people. Last night, yesterday, we were cracking up because I told her, mom, you look so pretty, you know, through, through, the, through the phone. Mom, you look so pretty. I love your dress. And she says, oh, I'm waiting for a, a gentleman. Date. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this is so funny. I'm like, mom, no wonder you look so beautiful. She said, no, the, the, the one who looks beautiful is you. I said, well, that's because I take after you, mom. She said, oh, yes, we just have to be very, very flirtatious all the time. I don't know where my mom was in her in that moment in that world, but you know what? I I I laugh. I laugh about those things because what am I gonna say, mom? There's nobody who's gonna guess it. What are you talking about? Yeah. You know my your my you know I don't I never remember you having a boyfriend after my dad left and then passed away. I mean, who are you expecting? But. It's easier to say, yes, somebody's coming. You have to be beautiful, you know, smell good and, and move on. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite funny. I have a quick question since you brought up the phone calls with her again. Yes. Um, my mom's visual processing was so bad that I didn't even attempt a FaceTime or a Zoom call with her in the two weeks from when she, they closed the residence to when she passed away yes because i just i knew from experience like i would like i said i have three golden retrievers she had dogs all her life and i you know one of my one of my dogs is a senior citizen one of them's really young so there was always something cute i mean they're golden retrievers like pfft, doesn't take very much to be cute yes and so i'd i would hold up my phone i'd be like oh let me show you this picture of my dog remy which is the baby and she'd like look everywhere but at the screen is your mom's visual processing better than that because I, I i'm going to give you um the tr the trick to it i have it the trick is to have someone helping her where to direct the vision and if they cannot see it's just okay well just listen to their voice so the lady who's there with her when she makes the phone calls made sure that she says look who's in the 
phone right now. So my mom, first thing, she's, I'm just on the phone, so she, she can hear my voice. And then she says, if you look here, you can see her. And I maybe make an expression, hi, mom. And I put my face. And there's days that she can actually, somehow, she, she puts her attention there and she can see something. And sometimes I can tell that she's just looking out there. So I just talked to her and I just, I said, oh, mom, I love technology. I can hear you as if I can touch you. So, but yes, they, they don't see well. They don't, they cannot, it's very hard unless you're in front of them. And even then, of course, we all know somebody may come and say, oh, look, Betty's here. They don't know who Betty is. So even if they're looking at them, they cannot recognize. So yes, yes, absolutely. So it's, it's not only you, it's, it's very hard. I just happen to have somebody who, who, who works at it in a way that if my mom cannot see, she makes it very, it's very okay. She doesn't need to see, she just have to hear. That would have been, it would have been nice to be able to experiment with that with my mom because she would get very frustrated. I think she, I mean, she was, I mean, obviously she passed away. So she was very late stages, but she just seemed like she, she didn't want help. And I right. think anything that was a challenge, she just kind of just, uh, forget it. You know, right. it's like, like the anxiety attack my husband had over the, hour long design appointment for his new website, you know, and all the questions and some of it he didn't understand. And it was just, you know, you could just see, it was like all, you could just see when he was like done, like, I don't get this. I feel like I've made a mistake. I'm freaking out, you know, and, it, and it's just, it, it would have been really helpful if at that point they could have just said, you know what, we got enough information to start, let's move forward. And, but with my mom, it's like, she would go from, nice to frustrated to like combative and angry really fast and it was sometimes very hard to backtrack did she have louis body dementia as well i don't think so yeah but there was we were sitting outside in february and she it was you know the sun was really warm the wind was chilly so between the two it was pretty pleasant we were just sitting out there in sweaters and was somewhat protected and she's pointing at this tree and she's talking about this woman and blah 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 blah. and i'm looking at the tree going i do believe she's actually having a hallucination because yeah. i looked at it i have lazy eye so my brain thinks i only see or my brain thinks i see double mm -hmm. been this way my entire life so it only accepts the vision one eye at a time so it's like wacky uh -huh. Um, and if you know me really well, if I'm tired or my sick or I'm sick, you can see it, and it's it's just weird. And it's well, just how is it that you see too? Tell me that again. I want to know. Well, like with lazy eye, my eyes would turn in. Okay. And so if you do that, you're going to see double. Okay. So they fixed it cosmetically, so I don't have like wandering eyes and um which i can actually cross one eye at a time which is really super creepy <laughs> my <laughs> husband really, can do that <laughs> it's i'm not sure you're supposed to be able to so because they didn't do the surgery early enough in life i was like almost four so it wasn't like i was old i mean uh -huh. not that i'm old now compared to my grandmother who's 102 um <laughs> age is relevant is my point yeah, exactly <laughs> basically my brain had trained itself that oh I don't know how your brain knows that you're not supposed to see two of everything. Cause if that's the way it's been your whole life, that's just uh -huh. normal, but it just literally, it just uses the, the input from one eye at a time. So like if you're using two monitors on your computer and mm -hmm. you're looking at one mm -hmm. and then the other, that's kind of how my brain works. Mm -hmm. So I have that. I don't have depth perception. So that made it really easy to deal with my mom's issue with shadows Mm. or different terrains like if you went from the sidewalk to the grass oh yeah yeah if you picture you know a cartoon character with their arms flailing like ah yes it could be yes. flat grass and it could be mowed really short and you yes. barely notice the difference but she's over there about to pitch herself onto the ground because the surface was different it looked different or lord walking around shadows was so frustrating <laughs> yes 
or yeah. puddles. Puddles is at least one thing, but a couple years ago, we would go to a regional park where the trail is reasonable. I mean, it's not like hiking. You did need tennis shoes. So I would think, thank God she and I wore the same size shoe. So I would just switch her to my tennis, my older tennis shoes and we'd just walk up in the hills and it was lovely. But this one day she literally stepped around all the shadows and we're out there with trees, like what's in the background right now. So it was like, okay, I might have to like fling you over my shoulder and like firemen carry you out of here. Cause you know, I'm gonna have to pee soon lady. Come on, we gotta get moving here. And then I think we went back like two weeks later and it was somewhat overcast. So there was significantly less shadows and she walked so much better. But like you were saying with your mom, she would watch her feet. And I was always afraid that she, you know, cause she would walk bent over at the waist watching her feet. And it's like, um, I'd, I'd be like, oh, look at the really pretty clouds. And oh, look at the bird, <laughs> whatever it was to get her to look up for five seconds. Cause then she'd walk faster. Yes. It got to the point where it was like, you know, like I had people say, oh, well, you should take her to the shopping center and look at Christmas decorations. And we tried that in the one shopping center that was closest to us. It was like, right. It was like the week of Thanksgiving. I think it was after Thanksgiving. They weren't done decorating. Not that it mattered. You know, great big trees, great big ornaments. And I'm like, oh, isn't this pretty? And she's like, looking all yeah. over the place. I'm like, okay, this isn't working either. And I've, right. I, I learned to places that were really super stimulating even a shopping center in the middle of the day when it was dead, no, no people shopping malls aren't exactly busy or weren't now they're not busy at all, but <laughs> you know, it's like, we would like, we went to the fabric store one time and she spent all this time picking crap up off the floor, which was making me insane. Mm -hmm. And then I had somebody say, you took her there. I'm like, yeah, she used to sew. She loves it. They're like, that place is overwhelming to me. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I guess it could be really overwhelming to somebody whose brain doesn't work right. <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's, their brains work completely differently. I mean, it, yes. It helps to understand that. Cause like I would try to take her, like with the last time we went to the fabric store, I had something I wanted to accomplish there. And she kept picking up stuff off the floor, which was freaking me out. So I, we left cause when she picked up a tissue, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're out. I'm done. <laughs> go wash our hands and go get something to drink because I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a last minute tip on self care, like a last mm. hurrah for people to take away before we go yes. this afternoon? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Okay. And this is great. This is um, gratitude. It's a way of self care, and we need to remind ourselves and be thankful and grateful that we are not perfect. So by writing somewhere where you're going to see it every day, that it's not perfection, it's your intention that counts. That's all that matters. So yes, you're, you're probably, your house is not going to be attended the way that you used to, uh, most likely you're going to make 60 million mistakes with your loved ones. Um, you are going to be frustrated, tired, but it's not about how perfect it went. It's how you felt because your intentions were pure. And that's why caring, self-care, making that list, trying to use as you go through your list, go into now you, you do on your body, you know, anything for your body. Let's go back into your spirit. What is it that is important spiritually to you? Is it a morning where you take a yoga class? Is it a morning that you take a meditation class? Uh, is it journaling? Whatever it is, do it. Add it. Because that, that gives you a different way. That gives you a little compassion to be able to deal with yourself compassion for yourself because the compassion for your parents your, and, and your loved ones you're going to have. You, that's what it's called, loved ones with dementia because you love them, but you cannot forget to love yourself. So write it down really big. You're doing the best you can on the really, really 
hard circumstances. Write it everywhere. Remind yourself of that. Give yourself a pat in the back and make your list. Body, soul, spirit, all of it, combine it. It's, 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 you know, you, you need to have the three of them. And uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, the, 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 you know, pray, love, and yes. She Eat, pray, one. love. Eat, pray, love. She said, perfection is unachievable. It's a myth and a trap and a hamster wheel that will run you to death. So I think that something we need to remember. We don't want to be that hamster. We're already in the wheel. So. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say, okay, I'm just going to ride the wheel without having to be perfect. And that's it. I, I think that's super important. I agree. And I find if I'm, I'm headed down a negative path of, you know, because this has been a really challenging year for me. And people, mm-hmm. regular listeners know the entire story. We move. My mom was a challenge. Moving pretty much retired me from portrait photography. My mom died. We have this pandemic. All of our vacations got canceled. I was like, oh, <laughs> and I'm a planner. So I do not like being in this perpetual state of just focus on today. But yes. I find sometimes if I just stop and, and just appreciate something, pretty flower or how cute the dog is or like I woke up this morning and I was like why can't I move and I was like literally hemmed in by the two boy dogs who were snuggling with me and it was like you know I could wake up and go oh why are these you know it's like I'm uncomfortable because these dogs I can't move my legs and instead it's like look how much they love me you know it's like they want to be touching me and cuddling me and okay yeah it's a little too warm but it's okay so I, I find accepting you know, the positives in your life, even if they're too super tiny, really, really helps keep your mood in a more positive way. I had to learn how not to be a negative, pessimistic person. And that was one of the tricks was like, you know, I woke up today. Yes. There's a good start. (laughs) Yes. I am going to have a gratitude challenge for 16 days starting August 16th to the 31st. That's for Spanish speaking, you know, bilingual people. Then in September, I'm going to do it for my English speaking people. And it's a 16 day challenge of gratitude, intentional gratitude with a practice that I use and a philosophy I use for a long, 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 almost 10 years called Ho'oponopono. And I speak all about it in my book. And I actually will be every day, you, the people will receive a practice and a tool from the Ho'oponopono practice to activate your gratitude and open up your heart. And exactly what you just said, um, what is it that you would perceive as negative, but see the positive and your day will shift. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. It's so, it's, gratitude is a, it's a tool that will heal every soul. That sounds like a beautiful sentiment to finish off this recording with. And I appreciate that you shared all this wonderful wisdom with everybody today. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. I, I love to, to, to be able to talk to you. You're doing such an amazing job to all those caregivers and continue doing it. You know, not because you don't consider yourself now the caregiver of your parents, you just you stay there focused with them and thank you for being there for us you're welcome fading memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts